the Honorable Mulda. Speaker, <coughs> you must not do that. Uh, speaker, I'm honored by uh, this debate, and I'm honored by all the contributions. I really wish I could uh, uh, react to every speaker. <coughs> There's an old uh, political saying that said, uh, all political careers end in tears. Now, with my decision to voluntarily resign as a member of parliament, I'm trying to avoid exactly that. It does ever not mean that I'm going to stop being actively involved. I believe that I still have a role to play in my community and in various spheres of society. Allow me a few words to express my gratitude. What have I learned in this house in this limited time? I've learned that my truth and your, tr your truth may differ, but that we still can debate with each other and still respect each other. I've learned that I've not persuaded someone just because I've silenced him or her. I've learned that anger is a wind that blows out the lamp of the mind. I've learned that politicians with talent are discovered in this place, but I've also learned that others are found out in this place. I've learned that if you make a mistake, the media like to portray you in a cartoon with your foot in your mouth. I've also learned that in this house, a closed mouth at the right time gathers no feet. I, <clears throat> I also learned that it's very important that no one can make you inferior without your own consent. Mm. I've learned that the hallways and the corridors of parliament is the only place in the world where stories and sounds travel faster than light. <clears throat> I've learned to be careful to wish for the departure of an opponent. There's always the risk that the replacement is even worse. <clears throat> I've also learned that in South Africa, identity is a highly, debate, a highly debated topic. Are you a South African or a Christian? You must debate that. Are you Zulu or are you South African? I believe that we really sometimes complicate this matter unnecessarily, as we all have a number of identities. My own identities ripple outwards like concentric circles. Firstly, I'm a family man and a father to my children, but I'm also an Afrikaner, and I'm also part of the greater Afrikaans community, but also a South African, because I only have one passport and only one continent as my home. Africa, in that sense, I'm also an African, and I'm a Christian all at the same time. All these identities have a role to play, depending on where you find yourself. As a Christian, I believe that I played my role here as a humble instrument in God's hand. In my identity as a South African, I served as a deputy minister for five years. At that time, I was the only minister that was not a member of the ANC. The Afrikaner said, Peter Tibir and Danganse Kral at the me, you see. At that stage, my FF Plus youth leader resigned because I did that. Another member of parliament and several other members of the FF Plus also resigned. But I still believe that taking that job was the right decision as it allowed me to contribute to making South Africa a better place for all of us. Because I say it more than once, if this South African ship goes down, we all go down together, not one alone. As deputy minister, I had the privilege to address African leaders at the African Union in Addis Ababa, in Ethiopia, assuming the identity of an African that is concerned about my continent. I was able to point out in that speech that neither the West nor the East really cares about Af Africa since the Cold War ended. My message was that we are going to have to solve our own problems from now on. 
Right from my first day in Parliament, my belief as an Afrikaner was that minority rights and self-determination must form part of the permanent solution to South Africa's problems, and you know I argued that accordingly. I also maintained throughout all the, that all the official languages in South Africa should be treated equally, just like the Constitution prescribes. You know, it took us nearly seven years of debates before we were able to establish an interpreting service for all 11 official languages in this house. If you want to help the people of Africa regain their dignity, and that's a very important part of the 94, I believe the first thing we need to do is to stop treating some languages as inferior to others, and that goes for all 11. Allow me a few acknowledgements. First of all, I would like to thank my supporters who supported me in seven consecutive elections, and we made it possible for me to represent them in Parliament for nearly three decades, 29 years. I'd also like to thank the Freedom Front Plus and my colleagues here in Parliament over there. I think we made a good team, and I believe we often contended out of our league. Thank you to all the other colleagues here in Parliament for the debates and talks during which we formed one another, and that's part of this House. A special thanks to the members of my committee for the spirit in which we were able to go about our business. A heartful thanks to the Freedom Front, Freedom Front Plus staff. And uh, I want to mention they're sitting at the top there, Darlene Stein, Peter Swart, Wanda Marais, Amanda Hughes, and Karine Neft, and others, who often worked under pressure and kept the deadlines, and who made it possible for me to be smart and to do my job. I would like to express my gratitude to the speaker behind me uh, for her job and the other presiding officers for the role they played, and also for the extra 10 seconds they often gave me during all my different speeches. Thank you for that. <clears throat> I may just add, Speaker, no speaker had the privilege in that 29 years to send me out of this house and to send me to leave. I've never done They would never do it. <laughs> to all the parliamentary staff, the administrative staff, the police out here, and the restaurant staff who work so hard behind the scenes, my sincerest thanks. You know, often amid all the political frustrations in this place, my lunch and their friendly service was the highlight of the day quite often. I have the greatest appreciation for my mother, who always supported me. She is now 90 years old, and she keeps telling me to leave politics. It's not a good day, it's very dangerous, she said. <laughs> and yet, she still watches the parliamentary debates every afternoon on TV. Then she phones me afterwards to tell me that I need a haircut and that my shirt and tie did not match. <laughs> <you see? clears throat> As a family man, I would like to thank my family for all the sacrifices they made over the years. Thank you to my wife, Trina, in particular, who worked in the Northwest, and we often had to raise the children on our own while I was here in Parliament. She was here sitting in the gallery when I was inaugurated 29 years ago, and she's here again today. <clears throat> We have been married for 44 years, but she says that I was away from home for parliament and political meetings so often that if she counts the days that I was at home, it only adds up to seven years marriage. <clears throat> so I'll have to make it up now going back there. Thank you very much, everybody. May God bless us all and make Barry South Africa. Thank you, honorable members, for the very heartfelt tributes from members from different parties. I wish to thank Dr. Mulder's wife, the family, and the office for all the support to him over the years that he was here. I wish Dr. Mulder to remind you of the occasion on which 
you led a delegation to the head offices of the African National Congress. And these are some of the things that happened behind, uh, behind the scenes. What struck me that day is that you led the FF Plus to come and express to the majority party that you were coming to pledge your willingness to be part of building the future of this country. You shared with us perspectives, information and understanding of the community that you come from, which we found very valuable. I want you to know that. And I want South Africa to know that we should agree that the biggest task that we have as South Africans and as South African leaders is indeed at the end of the day to make sure that we can leave a legacy that we did our bit during the time we were honored to serve in order for us to build a better South Africa. And on a couple of occasions, I've called on you, Dr. Mulder, right here in Parliament to my office, to contribute to a role that we are often called upon, and I think Honorable Butelezi often is, to be an elder of this country. Because we serve but for only a short time and we must always make the best of it. We thank you for doing it, Dr. Mulder. And we hope that you will indeed enjoy uh, the rest of your time. You've often talked about your grandchildren. Enjoy them thoroughly. Of course, it will be strange to see only one of the Mulder brothers sitting in the bench over there. But uh, we wish him good luck. Thank you, honorable members, and farewell to you, Dr. Mulder, on behalf of the presiding officers.